Hi, I'm Brian Barnett, Mayor of the City of Rochester Hills, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, today I have a couple important things to mention as we find ourselves in the middle of the month of March. And March is a lot of things to a lot of people. Of course, it here in the community means the seasons start to change, the weather gets a little warmer, people venture outside a little more often, and we all get excited for the, uh, the oncoming spring and summer seasons. But it's also an important time for our students. March is reading month, and it's a chance for us to stress the importance of, of getting into a good book and getting good habits of, about finding time to read in your, in your week and, and finding certain books that you like and beginning a strategy to uh, incorporate reading into every part of who you are. We encourage our students to do it. And normally in the month of March, I go to every elementary school and read a book. Uh, to show them how important it is, even for the mayor, to find time to continue to read. Well, March is also Women's History Month, and here in the city of Rochester Hills, we have so many outstanding women that have blazed a trail in our community to create really the community we enjoy today. From legends in our community like Bertha Van Heusen and Sarah Jones Van Heusen, who, who if you go out to the Van Heusen Museum can learn about the, uh, the amazing entrepreneurs they were and the way that they, um, they led and created so many jobs and such a legacy in this community that we can still celebrate out at the farmhouse and the museum today. Uh, to the women over my shoulder are city's female mayors, Mayor Ireland, who led the city from 1985 to 1995, our city's first female mayor, to Mayor Somerville, who preceded me who led the city for over six years. Uh, women have had a tremendous impact on guiding not just our city, but our city government. And currently here in the Rochester community, women lead our library and our older person center and our community foundation and so many other critical businesses. We're blessed to have had and continue to have tremendous women's leadership here in Rochester Hills. And so today I wanna combine those two by reading a book from a very famous female author and illustrator. It's called, If You Gave a Dog, or If You Give a Dog, a Donut. And it's written by Laura Numeroff and illustrated by Felicia Bond. So let's dive in. If you give a dog a donut, he'll ask for some apple juice to go with it. When you give him the juice, he'll drink it all up. Then he'll ask for more. There won't be any left, so he'll want to make his own. He'll go outside to pick apples. And when he's up in the tree, he'll toss you one. Throwing the apple will make him think of baseball. And then he'll want to play. You'll have to get a ball and a glove. Of course, he'll also need a bat, and he'll ask you to pitch. He'll hit a home run. And then he'll do a happy dance to celebrate. Dancing will make him hot and dusty, so he'll need some water. And he'll probably start a water fight. You'll have to dry him off with your bandana. He'll wrap it around his head and pretend that he's a pirate. Then he'll want to go on a treasure hunt. He'll find an old kite and he'll want to make one himself. So you'll have to get some sticks, some paper, and some string. And when this kite is finished, of course, he'll want to fly it, and it will go higher and higher until it gets tangled up in the apple tree. The tree will remind him of apple juice, so he'll probably ask you for some. And chances are, if he asks you for some apple juice, he'll want a donut to go with it. If You Give a Dog a Donut by Laura Numeroff and illustrated by Felicia Bond. Find a great book and read it this month. Take care.